and welcome back everyone uh we've got yet another uh great company and this is a, a private company actually this is i believe you're the only private company on here so it's uh, very interesting in the sense that uh this is an early opportunity so there's going to be a great presentation we've got shastri ramnath you're the president and ceo we have joshua bailey uh, the COO of Exiro Minerals. We're going to be going to that uh, presentation in its entirety. And like we've been doing all day, it's pretty about 25 minutes to 30 minutes or so. Uh, and then we're going to go over to the question period. So like I've been saying all day, we'd love to see your questions being put into here. Uh, it could be anything along the lines of, you know, when do you plan on going public or anything that comes to mind, throw your questions in there. And I'm sure any questions that they're able to answer, they will. And we're going to get through as many questions as possible for the end of this webinar. Lastly, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be uh, giving this handout to everyone. So in the handout section, you'll be able to now have this uh, presentation. You can now download at your own leisure on your own devices. So you can follow along, you can have it afterwards or whatever it be, but looking forward to hearing you both going over. I'm going to hand it over to you, Shastri, and you just let me know when we're going to get over to the Q&A. I'll throw my camera back on. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the introduction. And uh, as you've previously said, we are private. And uh, we are, we've been around for about six years, since 2014. And uh, we've raised six million privately over those six years. Um, and as we always say, the beauty of being private is you can be private. This is important because we've been able to navigate quietly and we can focus on the business and our owners. So I'll just flip to the next slide. Okay, so we'll be giving you an overview of Xyro Minerals, but we're also gonna give you an overview of our spin out, our first spin out, Willison Metals Corp, which we will be taking public. Hence the disclaimer, we will be talking about a few of our plans and forward looking statements. Okay, so let's get started. Who are we? And uh, what is our, our, our proposition, our business proposition? So first of all, it comes down to our values. We are, uh, we believe in um, technical excellence. Uh, we believe in business discipline. We believe in un unconventional thinking. And most importantly, we value courageous leadership. When we look at those four values, we can talk directly to our, our business proposition. So in terms of our, our business model, we're a business generator. And we've been de develop, biz, focused on um, generating uh, properties uh, and um, properties and spin outs and different business opportunities based on paper data. We've had a paper data focus and we've also been building proprietary software to actually process and go through that data. In terms of discovery success, we are both geologists. Our team is technical. We are driven to find a tier one discovery and we've been on discovery teams before. We are technically savvy while still believing in the traditional exploration methodologies and philosophies. We are fiscally responsible. We have a tight capital structure and we have a disciplined approach to managing our business. And most importantly, we are aligned. Josh and I own over 20% of the company and with our team, board, leadership and advisors, we own 30% and we put our own money into this. We've not only invested our money, but we've invested our careers. And then the other shareholders are all friends and family and we believe we have one of the best shareholder lists there is uh, on Bay Street for a junior company. Uh, we're also entrepreneurial and we focus on our values um, in relation to our business model. So in terms of our track record, we have a track record of founding and building successful business businesses. We are technical and have experience uh, in our past with high quality companies. Our team has been part of a company that has made uh, a few discoveries. I came from FNX Mining and uh, Joshua has come from Walbridge where we spent much of our careers. We're well networked. We have a strong modern leadership style. And most importantly, we're, we're well-rounded, backed by strong shareholders and carry a long-term contrarian view. Uh, and we'll come to, the, to our uh, strategy in a few minutes. In terms of our people, it's the most important part of any investment. Uh, I myself, as I said, came from FNX Mining and later co-founded a company called Oryx Geoscience that partners with companies in the mining industry and provides geological services. Joshua refers to himself as the overeducated prospector and uh, became my business partner about two and a half years ago. Uh, prior to that, he spent uh, over 13 years with Walbridge Mining. Uh, and most importantly, again, he's a, a major shareholder. 
We have Stephanie uh, Hart, who recently joined us. She comes from Valet. She was there for 18 years. She's the former head of North America Finance for Valet. And uh, we're very pleased that she's joined our team. We have Orist, who's our former CFO, but he's, uh, he's still working with us as our corporate secretary. Our board is highly reputable. We have Catherine Farrow, uh, former executive at Quadra FNX and then KGHM, uh, then TMAC uh, Resources. And she's on several boards currently, including Franco Nevada. We have David Elliott, who is actually a co-founder of Xyro Minerals and has been part of the story since day one, six years ago. Uh, and he's, he's on our board and uh, a significant shareholder. We have Nadim Kara, who's a strategist and uh, he's with Stratos and he, has a lot of experience with communications with government and industry, and he's been a really valuable addition to our team. In terms of the technical team, we have led by Gord Morrison. He is our mine finder. He's found 13 mines in the past, uh, six or seven of which are either in production or feasibility. He's uh, most importantly uh, a friend and somebody who mentors our team. We have Sydney and Kylie who are our geologists. They're spectacular. They're the brightest two geologists we could find and uh, we're so pleased to have them. We have Priya who supports uh, Stephanie in, on the financial side, and we have Zarina who manages our facility and our data processing facility in Mexico. And we have a picture there of our, our team in Mexico who are very proud of what they're doing. In terms of our capital structure, we have uh, almost 50% of the company owned by us and our friends and family. We have attracted some of the top institutions into our, into our company. We have resource capital funds out of Denver, Haywood Securities, Sprott USA. So Rick Rule and Dave, Neil Adset at the time, six years ago, founded the company with David and I. And then uh, we, our newest partner is Dundee, who we're very happy to, to have along with us. So again, we're private. We, we are not going to broadcast our capital structure, but if you're interested, you're welcome to reach out to us and we will provide you this information. Um, and then again, we've uh, we raised six million privately, non-brokered, with increasing valuation over the last six years. Okay, Josh, if you want to, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I was had to unmute. Afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We've got a heck of a team put together. We've got good backing, and uh, what I wanted to do now is share some of our philosophy about exploration and the value creation that happens at Discovery. There's lots of chatter in the industry right now about declining discovery rates. Um, the statistics are pretty obvious. And a lot of the things people blame this on is that the easy ones have been found, the deposits are now all undercover, um, you know, you get inflation in the industry when, when there's an upswing, everything gets more expensive. And we took a look at that and we love old records. And so we did a bunch of research on discovery probabilities and historical success rates. Um, we pulled together all available public, publicly available information on these types of things. And what we found is, uh, you know, we found a 460 year old uh, mining engineering textbook, De, De Ray Metallica, um, that complains that all the easy ones have been uh, found and talks about the need for diversification and, and reinvestment and exploration. There was, there was also a really uh, compelling paper written in 1977 that makes all the same arguments people make today about declining discovery rates. And then a couple of years later, 1982, the Hemlock gold mines found under the Trans-Canada Highway. So we think that, you know, it's not that the easy ones have been found. There never was any easy ones. And, um, but discovery rates are down and there's several reasons for this. The biggest one you can see on the slide here is that there's been about a 50 year decline in early stage mineral exploration. Companies have moved towards less risky, closer to brownfields uh, type exploration. Um, exploration has also been dele delegated to junior mining companies who have really intense short term pressures to produce news flow. It makes, it, it makes companies risk averse. And as Shastri says, that everyone gets focused on drilling the tail instead of stepping out and drilling the elephant. And the other reason is that the industry is actually not very good at using its data. And that's part of what we're trying to address. So. so our industry right now is really focused on AI and big data and machine learning. And uh, we're, we believe in that as well. But we think there's actually a piece of that that's, that's missing from the dialogue. 
Uh, if you look at data over history over time, it, you know, for a long period of time, up until about, we would argue up until the 1990s, a lot of the information that we collected was stored in paper. So paper is great because at that time there was a single canvas, we focused on rocks, but there were challenges and there currently are challenges with storing that data, searching it and manipulating it. We then progressed into the computer age where we could collect large amounts of paper quickly and we could reprocess it quickly. But we, there was a shift to just focusing on collection as opposed to integration and interpreting. Now we've entered the data age. This is the age now where we can all collect data, but we can also process it uh, quickly and efficiently and interpret it uh, really well. However, the challenge with this data age is that the paper data, which we would argue 90% of the world's expiration data sits in pieces of paper, is not in a format that can be used during the data age. So our business has been focused on collecting these paper documents. We believe that 100% of companies have boxes of paper sitting in warehouses, basements, and in storage, and it's not being utilized right now. And when we talk about paper, we're talking about, you know, the data you see on the top, the memos, which are the same as today's emails that give you the little tidbits of important information, maps, the hand-drawn maps of a prospector walking in 1962 over an outcrop, seeing visible gold, putting an X on his map, folding it, putting it away, and now that box has been hidden and passed on to different, different owners. Um, when we look at that data, we are talking about uh, examples like this one. And we've, we've redacted the parts of where this one is, but we, we've been shocked at the quality of information that, or quality of uh, geological information that we've identified. So this particular document shows uh, assays in a drill hole of 1.72% copper over 180 feet. And in another document of the same project, uh, you can see 60 feet of 1.35% copper, 1.14% copper. Um, we even today announced this morning uh, to our owners uh, a property we've acquired in the US that's a nickel copper deposit that we found in the historical records and then realized that a logging company actually owned the, uh, the mineral rights and we closed on that. So this is the type of information we're going after. We then take this information and do it the same way as everybody else. We digitize it, put it to ArcMap data mine, and use sophisticated software to actually use the information. So one of the questions is, what is the value of the old data? So to a lot of people, it's musty old files. It's basically a step up from recycling. Uh, sometimes it's covered in mold and when we come across it. Um, to us, though, we can look at the replacement cost. So if you assume $25,000 per document, it's a conservative estimate. It'd be a lot more than that if it was drilling information. Uh, there's about 100 documents per box. Um, you're looking at about $2.5 million worth of expiration in a box. And, you know, by this metric, the 4,000 boxes of data that we've collected to date contain quite a bit of valuable information that's not really accessible and, and not really being used by the industry in general. We're collecting data from all over the world. Um, you can see here a map showing uh, the distribution of the data that we have in North America. Um, and then our focus in terms of looking at the data is really just to follow it. So um, we have a geographic focus right now. Most of our projects are in Canada and the US and it's really driven by what we find in the data. Um, in terms of commodities, um, we're quite flexible, but we've spent the last couple of years pulling together gold targets in Canada. And many of these now we're uh, finding partners for and, and funding exploration at the, at the project level. Now that gold prices have come up and interest is there. More recently, we've spent the last year studying copper and nickel copper cobalt opportunities in the US. And we're now closing on a series of acquisitions. As Shastri mentioned, we've just we've just acquired this high-grade nickel copper cobalt resource project in the in the US. And it's we found it in our data. It's been outside of the mining industry. And what's remarkable is there's a near-surface resource there that hasn't seen drilling or geophysics since the 1970s. Um, we take a very systematic approach to targeting. We build a regional framework. We look at the controls on mineralization at a crustal scale big regional scale, and then we work our way down. We pick favorite jurisdictions and systematically put together the geology and then go through our proprietary data and other public data 
to identify acquisition opportunities. Uh, you know, one of the things we're not doing is just acquiring a showing because the industry's gotten hot and then we're trying to figure out what to do with it. We think that's one of the, the big problems in the industry. In terms of technology, we get asked a lot about AI. We like technology. We see the use for AI. Uh, we've developed some proprietary tools ourselves. However, we also honor the old school approach to looking at geology and really thinking it through and being creative. We don't believe that black box AI solutions are gonna be effective. We see technology really as a tool that we can leverage human capabilities, human intelligence and skills like creativity and, and leadership. So this is our portfolio. It's a busy slide. Uh, Shastri and I have almost been at this now full time for three years and along with our team. We've collected about 4,000 boxes of data, several software tools that we've developed We've developed uh, over 1,100 targets that we've identified in our database from our data and from other opportunities that come in the door. Um, we're in the middle right now of about 13 acquisitions that we're working on right now. We've uh, spun out Willison Metals, which we're gonna tell you about a bit more. It's exciting high-grade gold projects in Manitoba. We've got one strategic alliance with a mid-tier gold producer. Uh, we've sold a number of projects and have projects under option that junior mining companies are funding exploration work. So right now we've got exposure to 16 exploration programs. Uh, we've got royalties on over 580 square kilometers of ground, and we've got equity investments in 10 companies. So we're very busy. We're doing a lot with, uh, with the team that we have. So the investment opportunity for, uh, for people that are interested in partnering with us is really to partner with us. We're looking for ec equity investors, but we're picky and, and we can afford to be. We're looking for data. Uh, we'll scan boxes of old paper data for free. We're looking for partners to fund generative exploration alliances in specific regions or following certain themes, using our data, maybe their data, and we're looking for partners to fund exploration on uh, projects that we have in our portfolio already. So the key thing is that we, we will uh, finance the company when we find the right people, not when we run out of money. So right now we do have cash, but we're always looking. Um, in terms of what, uh, what is part of the business opportunity is this idea that, you know, the mining cycle is now, we're heading into an upturn which we've predicted. This is a slide that we put together a couple of years ago, but I think our timing is, is pretty close to what we see there. The technology curve where we're now being able to create platforms and build, like even us building our own software, we're in a period of time where technology is going to take over. But one of the greatest challenges our industry is going to face is team and, and workforce. Because the last downturn was so long, um, as we go into this upturn, it's going to be hard to find a, a group of high quality people to explore um, assets. So why Xyro? We're a strong uh, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial leadership team with uh, discovery and business experience. We are extremely aligned as we are owners of the company and we put our own money into it. We have a firm belief that there are tier one and tier two discoveries out there just waiting to be made. Um, we, we are, our goal and our vision is to assemble the largest proprietary collection of historical data. Uh, we are customizing our own software tools and processes to generate these high quality processes. And we actually have uh, on-demand access to a strong technical, technical team. So I co-own, prior to Xyro, I co-own a company called Orcs Geoscience, and we can tap into that team as needed. Right now, there are over 50 employees in that company. Okay, so Willison Metals Corp. This is the company, our first spin out that we are gonna take public. We incorporated it in March. We've acquired four assets from Xyro uh, that are in Northern Manitoba and Lynn Lake. Um, we did a return of capital to our Xyro shareholders. So there are two reasons for doing that. One is obviously liquidity and being able to, to give liquidity to our shareholders. But more important is that the spectacular shareholder list that we've created, we have now have it in Willison and that's where we're starting. Um, we have a very strong uh, board and leadership team we've put together and we've already raised since March 1.5 million and are working towards an IPO. So here's our team. 
our, we have Felix Lee, who uh, you may have heard of. He's the president and CEO, uh, or sorry, president of PDAC right now. And uh, Stephanie Hart, who's also our CFO, is 50% Willison. In terms of our board, we have Catherine Farrow until the IPO. And we have uh, Robert Dixon, who are very pleased to have joined us. He's got the capital markets expertise. He comes from Dundee. And we have Karen Reese, who's been a geologist, who's worked uh, most of her career in, uh, in the junior uh, world. So right now, our capital structures, we have 25 million shares out. Again, it's family and friends and insiders who own most of the company. Uh, we have the same institutions in as owners. Um, and uh, Exiro owns 30%. So we're really excited about what Williston's going to do and, and supporting Felix and the team that he's building. Um, it's a pretty unique story. Uh, there's a slide here. If you look at global gold endowment, almost all of the most recent tier one discoveries have been in Proterozoic greenstone belts. And in fact, four of the top six Precambrian gold mines globally are Proterozoic. Then when you look at Canada, the Proterozoic rocks in Manitoba have been mostly controlled by base metal companies, Hud Bay, Sherrick Gordon, over the last 50 years. Um, the, the belt in Manitoba has never really been explored for gold, and we see this as just a massive uh, unexplored search space with, with Tier 1 gold discovery potential. Um, Manitoba itself is a great jurisdiction. There's great geology. There's a welcoming government. There's lo lo local workforce and expertise in mining. Um, Exiro's team has a lot of experience and ties to Manitoba. Uh, Oryx Geoscience, the Shastri mentioned, has an office in Winnipeg. Shastri herself is from Manitoba, and she's an obnoxiously proud Jets fan. Uh, she's also chair of the ministry's, uh, Minister's Industry Liaison Committee, and she's been very successful in bringing the industry perspective to uh, to the government. And I think there's a lot of positive changes that are being made in, in Manitoba. And uh, it's a, a very competitive flow through. Um, there's, a whole, there's a whole ton of reasons why Manitoba is just a great jurisdiction. If you look at uh, Lynn Lake itself, um, Willison has four large projects in the Lynn Lake area of Manitoba. Each one of these alone is a district scale project. Um, exploration for gold really didn't start in Lynn Lake until the 1990s. Uh, the belt's seen some past production, but really it hasn't had a lot of exploration for gold, and we see this as a great potential. Most recently, Alamos Gold has, has been exploring quite aggressively in the last few years, and they published a feasibility study on several million ounces uh, that they have in the belt and we're surrounding uh, the, you know, the work that they're doing on our properties. Um, Willison's Bocage property is probably the focus. Uh, it's a large district scale property on its own. It's got high grade gold occurrences all over the property, hosted in all kinds of different rock types. Um, it's had virtually no expiration since 1990. Xyro and, and Willison in the last couple of years have done some, some ground truthing and had success um, confirming great high-grade gold at a lot of these occurrences. We've flown airborne geophysics. We put, to, we put the geology together in a really detailed way. And we've identified half a dozen or more targets that are drill ready or near drill ready, um, any one of which could be a big discovery. Uh, we're really excited to be working with Felix and the team and, and moving these projects forward. Okay. Um, and if anybody's interested in hearing the full story, Felix and I can give the, the full presentation. So this is what we've done uh, this year, and we're looking to do an IPO uh, early next year. Uh, we're working towards that. We're doing a field program right now uh, in Manitoba. We're doing an airborne survey, and we're going to be reinterpreting the geology from those projects. Uh, with the, the funds raised, we, we are ready. The projects are drill ready, uh, especially Bukaj, and we're excited to, uh, to have the drills turning there. Okay, so why Willison? Once again, aligned people, strong technical team, uh, a board that's tied to capital markets, uh, local workforce in Manitoba, which is relevant during COVID. We have a strong, exceptionally strong shareholder base. We, we like to refer to Manitoba as mining friendly. And yes, I'm a very proud Manitoban. I think that it's one. <laughs> I think it's one of the underlooked jurisdictions on the planet. And I, as I've, I've 
said to the premier of the province, uh, it should be the number one place in the world to explore. It's an up and coming jurisdiction. It's got a re we've got the reputable team. Uh, we have established government relationships and it's flow through eligible. It has one of the best flow through eligibilities in, uh, in Canada. Uh, it, as Josh pointed out, it's gold in an overlooked belt. Um, it's, it's, under, it's an underexplored proto-resort belt. Um, Homestake, uh, the 40 million ounces in uh, the US is actually in the same, uh, is in the Trans-Hudson. Um, and it's positioned to become a significant gold explorer in the jurisdiction typically focused on base metals. So before we take any questions, I'll just mention once again, if you're interested in learning more of either company, please feel free, free to reach out to us. Um, we're always open to talking to people, but just more one-on-one -on -one in terms of capital structure and especially with Xyro. Xyro has no intention of going public at this point in time. We plan on remaining private, but we are um, we do have plans as we find assets to uh, do other spin-outs. And depending on the types of assets we find, uh, we will uh, create a business case for those particular opportunities. So that's it. Thank you. Beautiful. And uh, thank you, Shastri and, uh, and Joshua for that. I appreciate it very much. And, uh, I can delete my question. I had a, I had a question right at the very, very top, uh, which was asking about, uh, do you have a go public strategy and that go public strategy is not right now. So I like that. Um, we'll continue going down here. And for anybody who's watching this as well, please, we'd, we'd love to hear your questions. I know when it comes to public companies, there's, uh, you're, you're, uh, there's always that curiosity, you know, what's going on behind the curtain? Why isn't it out yet? And all that. So it's exciting. So if you do have questions in there, we, we'd love to, to hear them. Uh, we'd love to be able to, to address them here. We'll start with the first one in here. And it says, um, do you plan to increase your, your key shareholder base if you go public or if you need to raise more funds? The answer is yes. We're 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 looking for more partners um, when we go public with with Willison. We're also looking for key shareholders in Exiro. And part of it is obviously funds, which is you know great to to bring in funds. But we are very fussy who we bring in, and it's about the networks and being have being tapped into other companies or um, you know other uh, other investors in the future. Absolutely. Well, I'll, I'll add to that question, if you don't mind, then if you were to look for specific uh, styles and types of investors, um, I, I can imagine there's a certain criterion that you're looking for. So if this is if someone's watching this right now, if they're watching this uh, on YouTube or on uh, your platform or anything afterwards, if you were to describe those two, you would be looking for for Xyro, uh, how would you describe that type of investor fund or or business to have an investment in your company? Well, I, I, I pass it on to Josh uh, my, uh, for him to give his comments. We want people who want to find tier one deposits, who understand the industry, who trust us to make the decisions that will lead to those types of discoveries, and uh, people who have long-term vision, that they don't just want to stock pumped uh, just so that they can sell, because that's not what we're about. I, uh, I, I, can, I can just echo what you said. I mean, it's really... Um, particularly in Xyro, people with a long-term vision have similar values as us and want to focus on the value creation that comes out of discovery. We're not, we're not just playing a paper game. We want to find new mineral deposits. We want to create wealth, support communities, support our economy. Um, that, that's what we're looking for. And we're looking for partners that, that can work with us and align with that. Absolutely. Appreciate that. Uh, another question here is, um, well, I believe you, you were just talking about this actually very briefly. Do you plan to do a raise for the company along with uh, Willison? We we do plan on doing a raise. If and it's we're not it's not uh, we don't have to do a raise. We are looking to do a raise though early next year. Gotcha. Oh, good to know as well. Um, I believe you went over this a little bit, but I'd like to, uh, I, I was a little bit more curious about getting a little bit more understanding on this is where, how do you get access uh, to paper databases? Do you have to pay for them? Are there archives that you're able just to grab? Like, how do you get that access? You go, Josh. <laughs> well, you know, all different ways. We, we've got people in our circle that have brought us one map to, or one box of files. 
and and we've taken it and 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 we incorporated it into our database. Um, we've got companies that have given us uh, a thousand. Our, our largest single collection was a thousand and one boxes of files, wow. um, and everything in between. So it's you know the the standard um, the standard structure is basically that we will scan and catalog the files and provide the company uh, a copy of all of the scans and a, a detailed index of each of the documents. And in exchange, we want to uh, keep a copy of the records that we can use. And then if there's some way to collaborate beyond that with the other company, then we look at that. So it's, uh, it, but it's lots of different things. We've, we go in and talk to people and they say, oh, I wish you'd spoken to us six months ago because we just shredded a container full of files or uh, that kind of a thing. And then, and then at other times people are happy for us just to come and pick up all the documents that they have in their storage or their attic or their basement or, you know, it's, it just comes to us. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's funny because when we approach the, we actually kind of got uh, laughed at. They, 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 because they understood the value of the data. Like, why would we give you all our data? It's super valuable. <laughs> So we've been laughed out of the room right through to, can you get this garbage out of here as soon as possible? So it depends on who we're talking to, but most people recognize the value in it. It's just, they don't know what to do with it. Yeah. No, very, very, uh, very fair. Uh, and you had spoken briefly about, uh, uh, you know, potential spinoffs and things like that. Uh, obviously th these are not hypotheticals because uh, at some point you may do that for a certain property, whatever it is, but um, in the nearer future, uh, you know, maybe by the end of this year or early next year, do you have any intentions of having one of those spinoffs where uh, potentially investors, whether accredited or whatever uh, you choose, will have an opportunity to, to get access to something like this? Uh, Xiro, I know, is going to be staying private a little bit longer, but uh, do you have any of those coming up in the near horizon that, uh, that investors can partake in? How can we safely answer this, Josh? <laughs> Forgive me, I, I want a specific answer, uh, question there. <laughs> this is going to pop right in my head, but uh, forgive me there. <laughs> there. There are some opportunities we're pursuing that we're trying to wrap a company around. Yes, but we're working on it. Yeah, it's really, it really depends on timing and the asset. And, you know, we the way we look at it is once we pull together a portfolio of ground that, you know, we really believe in, then it's, you know, what's the least dilutive way to finance the expiration and, and, and advance those projects? Is it to bring a partner in? Is it to uh, put them in a vehicle where we can raise money publicly to do the work? It's really what makes sense in terms of, you know, is is are the assets going to be received well by the public markets or are they something that, you know, really require the, the longer term more patient perspective that a major might bring. So mm -hmm. it, it all depends and we're working on a ton of good opportunities. That type of structure is definitely part of our business model. And, and uh, you know, everyone in the company eventually needs liquidity as well. Um, but we have a long term outlook. So absolutely. And uh, the opposite of long term, short term, if you were looking at a short term basis, what are the, those, uh, you know, what's that one or maybe two catalysts that uh, that you two are, are most excited about, about what you want to accomplish in the near term? This could be both for the investors currently uh, in your in your company, or maybe this is, uh, you know, attracted somebody who, who fit everything that you were saying earlier, Sastry, of who you would like to, to have a part of the company. And they're, they're curious, what's that? one or two catalysts that you're really excited about uh, over the near term of, you know, the next three to six months? Well, those are our secrets. Uh, <laughs> private. You get to keep it secret too. You don't have to tell anyone. <laughs> We're private. We can be stay private. Yeah. <laughs> can be private we are definitely we definitely have some stuff and josh and i were just reflecting this morning again it's such an exciting time right now we're just talking about the things we can talk about we're entering other jurisdictions on the planet um we you know there's and because we're a little bit different in terms of we get excited about data our software the the opportunities we're generating and then the spin out so there's there's all kinds of or the, or the deals that we do on the opportunities we identify so there's a lot of things we're excited about um and the new stuff is is stuff we can't talk about but it's it's exciting and part of it is we don't want be i mean we don't want to tip off others to go and and pursue some of these things so we're very private about what we're doing 
No, that's okay. Look, so essentially for for that person or or entity that uh, may be watching this right now uh, and hearing that, it, the, basically you, you've you've heard the story, you've you've heard the management team. It's more of a you should be reaching out right now. You should be reaching out, and I'm sure they can speak a little bit more uh, candidly. Absolutely. We'll tell a few secrets that we have that we don't want to have on a video on YouTube, but yeah. that we're open to saying what, where we're going and what we're doing. If you call us, we'll call us. <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. Well, well, on that note, then uh, I appreciate very much taking the time and going over your story. Very unique, um, uh, easily the most unique of, of the companies that are on, uh, you know, in this conference, one being the only uh, private company, but two, just the way that you set it up as well. Uh, in closing re remarks, if you don't mind, Sastri, just uh, if you just reaching out to those investors, if they if they are trying to reach out to you, if they are trying to get a hold of you, where would you like to guide them? Uh, in terms of how they get a hold of us? Yes, yes. Uh, so if they, they're watching this, like, hey, I can reach out via email. I can reach out via a contact number or, or whatever, yeah. or maybe not a number, but contact email. Actually, I just realized we didn't put it on here and uh, we should have. So I apologize. Uh, if you want to write it down, it's our it's shastri.ramnath at xyrominerals.com. But if you go to our websites, um, you can just send an email and Josh and I will receive it if it's through info. Um, but uh, yeah, just feel free to just send us an email through the info. Absolutely. Well, uh, I appreciate the two of you taking your time today. Uh, I appreciate going over this and for all of our investors as well. We're gonna have a little bit of a break before our first one. It's a long day, so uh, enjoy, maybe grab that bite. We got uh, another two companies coming up that are uh, gonna be fantastic companies to watch and then a, a great speaker uh, after to close off this conference. But once again, thank you two for your time and good luck with everything uh, to finish off 2020, but uh, more importantly and excitingly uh, to go into 2021 as well.